In the big picture, leadership development is big business. On a personal level, it's too important to ignore for us as leaders. People continue to look for ways to encourage that development, find ways to make it more interesting and lasting. A leader herself, our guest today, is a proponent for developing leaders in a unique way. Uh, you're here because you want to be a better leader, make a bigger impact, be a more remarkable leader. And today you're going to learn a new way, a new path to help you get there. Welcome to another live episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. Um, if you are listening to this podcast, you could be live for future episodes on your favorite social media channel. You can get access to that information and join us for future live episodes and therefore interact with my guests and I and get this information sooner by joining our Facebook or LinkedIn groups. Just go to remarkablepodcast.com slash Facebook or remarkablepodcast.com slash LinkedIn to do that. Today's episode is brought to you by Remarkable Masterclasses. Remarkable Masterclasses are a way to help you become the remarkable leader and human you were born to be. Details on how to get on board for a specific skill and learn more can all be found at remarkablemasterclass.com. And so with that, what I want to do is bring in my guest add her to the stream there. If you're watching, you can see her. Let me introduce our guest to you today. Our guest today is Melanie Bell. She is the co-founder of Strategic Peace, a company that helps business to business businesses create and generate outstanding revenue growth by bringing together their marketing, sales, and service teams around an information-driven, ah, information-driven customer experience based on the HubSpot platform. She is an active angel investor and mentors the students in, in student accelerator programs at Rice University's OwlSpark and the University of Houston's RED Labs. Before founding Strategic Peace, she was the president of Marketing Interface. She has another venture, and we'll talk about that shortly. But for right now, Melanie, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Well, okay, I'm going to tell everybody what Melanie told me before we started, and that is this is her first podcast. So, okay. Melanie, I'm so glad that you're here, and I'm glad that uh, maybe um, this will be the first of many, many, many for you. So, that would be awesome. Um, uh, so I, I want to start the way I often start, and that is to give people a little bit more a sense about you beyond a bio. So um, tell us about your journey. What sort of leads you to doing the work that you do every day? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Sure. Uh, so I'm definitely one of those people who I think and probably hopefully makes for a more interesting story in that it wasn't like, oh, I wanted to be a doctor. And so I went to med school. Okay, I, I became a doctor. It's been a bit more windy. Um, I, when I was graduating from college, needed to figure out a job. I was living in Canada and not Canadian and needed it to be related to what I had studied in school. And so I made up a case for how marketing was related to studying liberal arts. And so I ended up working in digital marketing. That was that was my start and it was because I needed a visa. It's been a great fit. Um, I, after doing that for a couple of years and actually after one year I became the manager of my company's department. We were growing really, really fast. It was exciting, um, but I felt like I needed more of a solid business background. So I decided to go back to business school and loved the startup space, loved tech space. So I joined a startup accelerator um, when I graduated there. And then after a couple years of running their marketing, decided I wanted to go out on my own. So I started my own company almost eight years ago. Um, my first client was a venture capital group. I've worked with lots of um, different, everyone from founders who are really getting started and figuring out what their business is going to do at all to, you know, companies out of 200 people and um, figuring out how they're going to grow. So it's been interesting, but the other kind of dual side of this, because I'm not really here to talk about marketing as fun and insightful as that is, is that I've been a really avid reader. Um, that got shelved as the more and more I kind of went up the ladder or went to business school that really fell by the wayside. And um, it's come back to me in the last few years and it's just been such an impactful leadership thing. So. I know we'll we'll kind of get into that, but that's kind of my new my new stage in the story. But that's at chapter one. Yeah, we'll we'll get to chapter two here in just a second. Yeah. But um, you know, I I opened 
the show before I introduced you by talking about leadership development and everyone's trying to figure out ways to do that. And, and obviously you're in the marketing world, but you also are a business owner and you have a team. So what is it that draws you to leadership development or why does it matter to you? Sure. I think, um, so my first experience where I was really getting into a leadership role, I was becoming a manager of this department and I hadn't really had a manager. Like I had a couple of people higher than me, but it was like, I was stepping into this role. I hadn't really seen anybody do. And I felt quite lost. Um, it wasn't a positive experience. I definitely like, I, I think if you talk to people who were on my team at the time, they probably don't have great memories of me, unfortunately, <laughs> but I had no clue what I was doing. Um, and so it was definitely kind of learning as I went and figuring out and making mistakes. That was one of the things that appealed to me about business school was there was a way to go study this without having to just constantly be in the line of fire. Um, and so I think it was just like, I knew that there was, at the time I went to my boss, I'm like, okay, so can you explain to me, like, how do I go learn how to be a leader or go be a manager? And their answer was go read psychology books. And, um, and that was about the, the most training we got. I think we had like two half day seminars in a year and a half on how to do this. And so I was completely lost. Um, See, now then, you could, they could have just said, go listen to the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, right? But that totally. didn't probably yes. exist. Yes, podcasts so, were not a thing. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. You, um, that story, I mean, the end part of that story, I got promoted from being a member of the team to being in charge of the team, uh, going what we call from bud to boss, is, is a hard thing. It's like the hardest thing for any of us to do in our career. And I know a lot of people that are watching and listening have been there and done that. Um, but yeah. you gave us a clue that you... you you didn't say it, but I think you told us that your undergrad degree is not in marketing, is not in business, but is in liberal arts. Yes. So my major was international development studies. So it was a lot of political science, economics, anthropology, geography, that. And a lot world. of reading. So, and a lot of reading. A lot so, of reading. So the, the teasing is done. I like we're, we're yeah. not going to tease this any longer. <laughs> I want you to tell us what this other brand new venture is. Yes. Yes. So um, I've started a group and it is really right now, it is a group. It's early days. Um, it's called Leaders Who Fiction. And this was a bit of a brainchild for me of kind of came from, I had an aha moment and this was like probably almost 10 years ago after business school, I was working on a startup accelerator and my friend had recommended the science fiction book to me. And I'm not a big science fiction reader. That's kind of outside my comfort zone. And, and it was written for kids. And I remember like reading it and I was like, Oh my God, I really wish I had read this in business school. Like this was better than the management books that they had us read through business school. And so I had kind of gradually increased my, how much I was reading. I have a lot of, um, friends and clients who I would talk to about reading who were avid readers and they're like, I can't find the time to do this. And so this was my idea that I had last, it was actually a year ago of well, what if we were, you know, had the benefit of a group of people. So we, as leaders, you know, we all need to build our networks and that kind of thing, which especially as for people who are, I'm an ambivert, but introverts or ambiverts, that that's not the most comfortable thing for us to go do. Um, but it helps when you have something concrete to talk around, but let's create a group that gives people this excuse to pick up their fiction because everyone, like a lot of people I know, they are reading business books, you know, okay, I've got this challenge at work. I'm going to go, go read that. But the last time they read a novel years ago, even if that's something that they really enjoyed. And so I felt like this was, if, you know, kind of a, a way to say, hey, look, like I still want you to read for enjoyment, but I'm going to give you a productive excuse <laughs> for doing that. Um, so that was how this idea came about. So we meet normally about once a month, like a book club. I mean, hopefully it will kind of not just stop at a book club, but that's where we're at right now. And well, we'll get to some of that in a minute. I want to talk about the whole book club thing and all that in a second. Sure. But I want to, you've sort of given us the, the genesis of this, um, but why, from your perspective, is fiction so powerful 
for us uh, when we think about it as a leader? Sure. So I had just noticed it anecdotally for myself. The more I read, the more I was able to take a leadership role with my clients. I was able to communicate better. I felt like I had a different level of understanding for them. And then I wondered, I was like, okay, so am I a one-off here? Like, is this just working for me, you know, cause I'm a reader or something like that. And so I've spent quite a bit of time doing a lot of research. There are a handful of articles that people have written that talk about the, you know, the connection between fiction and leadership, but it's a real, it's not a lot. I mean, you can look at, there's a couple articles in HBR, Forbes, Inc., you know, those, those go to, but what I'm interested, what I found really interesting is there's a lot of research that's been done on the connection between reading fiction and from a neuroscience perspective, what's the psychological benefit that we get? Um, what parts of the brain are triggered when we read fiction? How is that, first of all, how is reading different than watching TV or listening to a podcast or video, but also specifically the fiction aspect of it versus nonfiction? And there's a lot of actual science that backs this up. Um, and so there's stuff that's, I mean, it does increase our empathy because we can walk around in somebody else's shoes. Um, some of the other interesting points that I've read have been about how if you're reading a business book, a lot of times the writers have distilled problems down into their core essence. And so it's, we get a very black and white, sometimes black, gray and white view of problems, whereas a fiction authors are really trying to make characters complicated. Um, they're trying to make situations much more real. And so it trains our brain to not jump to conclusions as fast. And it allows us to look through issues that ha are really complex and be able to navigate that. And I mean, talk about what we're talking, you know, what we say leaders in the 21st century, what skills they need, the creativity, the complex problem solving, you know, that kind of stuff is just so powerful. And I'm like, okay, the like, there's been research on the neuroscience aspect of that. Um, Okay, so all that's cool, like and interesting, right? And for yeah. nonfiction readers, now they're going to go dive into all that, which is fine, <laughs> which is great. Um, but on, on a practical level, how do you, how do you how do we, uh, you and your group, you yourself, what's your advice to us about translating that? Like, okay, I'm reading this story, right? Yeah. How do I translate that? I have some thoughts that I want to share, but I really want to know what how, sure what your advice is about how to translate that back to leadership in general, or perhaps the specific challenge that you're facing right now? Sure. So to me, I mean, obviously, obviously there's like the benefit of communication skills, but you have to be reading quality fiction too for that. Like you can't, you know, it, it can't just be some crap book. Um, oh, okay. But, well, we'll get to all that in a few minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Tip but, number one, everybody don't read quote crap books. Crap. That's Melanie's first tip for you. <laughs> Um, I think, and this goes back to, I think when my first bosses and I was stepping into this managerial role and I was at a loss, they said, go read psychology books. Cause if you understand people, then you're going to be a better leader. You're going to be able to better manage them. And so much when, and this is different, I think too, than high school English class when you like, okay, I'm like learning to write, you know, read for symbolism and allegories and all that kind of stuff. When I read now, what I'm looking at is what are the power dynamics in a scene? Who has the power? What are the stakes? And really, what's that character's underlying motivation? And I think it's an interesting brain exercise for leaders to be able to start picking that up and so that you can read. I mean, we're leading people, we're leading communities and teams and, and individuals. And so it's, it's almost like that practical exercise that you can have without having to do it in real life and maybe get it wrong. So I think to me, that's like one of the biggest things is well, learning stakes, how to read people. The stakes are lower. We're doing it in the third person, if you will. Right. And we're able to do it. Yeah. Um, we're able to do it slowly. Like we can stop reading. We can stop yes. and we can ponder. Um, I like to think about this um, and, and not just with fiction, but all sorts of things so like yeah. observing or in this case, reading 
through a leadership lens. I mean, what you start out by yes. saying is I'm looking at the power dynamics and looking at the relationships. You can certainly be looking at the communication skills or, or approaches, right? So um, yes. asking yourself ahead of time, what would I do? What, what, why did that work or why did that not work? All that stuff, looking at it through the lens of leadership. And so you're thinking yes. about doing that with fiction. And we've talked about the neuroscience of reading fiction and all that. What I don't know that maybe anyone who's listening knows is that a long time ago, I worked on a book, which... I never finished the concept of uh, doing the same basic thing with movies. And mm. uh, the, the project was called Magical Movies. And, and it was looking at uh, the same idea of how can we take that experience and draw lessons from it, leadership or otherwise. So I'm, I'm right in line with you. And, and quite honestly, that's one of the reasons why I have you here, because I think it's a really useful an interesting thing to think about how can we work on our leadership skills uh, while we're doing something else. And it's, and it's not, as you said yes. earlier, I can have some fun. I can do some reading that I want to do and, and still get benefit and, and not have to have a highlighter. Right. Uh, necessarily. Right. So uh, and I think, I think it's really great. Go ahead. Yeah. One thing that I thought was interesting, because I think more and more, especially, I mean, talk about the proliferation of social media that's happened in the last few years. And now, I mean, from a marketing perspective, I'll, you know, I work a lot of times with the C-suite and everyone needs to be thought leaders and, and brands are going to be storytellers. And, and a lot of times that's now becoming, when we talk about senior leadership, a lot of their role is that storytelling. And so you can learn that part, I think, through, through movies, through books, through, through that kind of story. One interesting thing to me is that when you're reading versus watching a show or listening to something, is that it actually triggers parts in your brain that act as if it's a simulation. And so it's close to, you know, VR or something. I mean, even just reading something on a page, our brains function differently. And so it is um, that simulation aspect. Plus then, like you said, you, you have time to think about, well, what, you know, that situation and do some reflection. But the other amazing thing to me is that because it's somebody else, in the story, it's not actually you, you can also have that reflection and not feel defensive about it. And I think you can get real honest with yourself <laughs> if you allow yourself to go there. Um, and I think that's kind of an interesting thing that we can take away too. Well, that's talking about it, Melanie, from that, that, that introspective personal experience with that story, with that novel, with that book of work of fiction yeah but you're taking it to a place of giving people a safe place and using that fiction as the jumping off point point for conversation so talk about uh yeah. we'll call it for now uh, a group you said it's kind of a book club but you hope sure. it's more like like what is yeah. your tell us about who has been drawn to join your group and what perhaps um uh, you've learned in leading this group sure so we have it's a real mix of people um we do have some found you know founders that are there we have people who are working their way up and i talk corporate ladder i mean like fortune 10 corporate ladder um you know kind of middle to senior management there um we have a member who is um more involved in nonprofits and policy work um we have one of our members is um, a therapist and business coach, but she works with, you know, big hospitals and small companies. And I mean, so she herself is a coach, you know, leadership coach, and she's been involved with it. Um, so it's a real mix of people. Um, and what I've said, so I like I said, our first meeting was in January. That was that we, um, we had our first, um, book that we read then. And the interesting thing to me was, and again, like some of the people in our group, they've been very avid readers. I know they're like, I know them pretty well and um, some of them very well. And I know that they love to read. And what they've told me in the last couple of months or two, and they're like, I've actually already read more this year than I have in the last few years because I've got the deadline, right? I mean, it, I think from that respect- I'm not gonna show up at the meeting any, when not having read the book. If any group accountability, you know, it gives you, it gives you the deadline. Um, you know, they're like, Oh, I could have started it and just put it down, but I actually finished it because I wanted to show up for this. Um, and I think one of the other things I thought was interesting was one or two people have mentioned they were nervous about coming because they were 
a bit intimidated. Um, not sure really what they were going to get into. And they, and then they're like, okay, this wasn't intimidating at all. Cause I think as the conversation flows, you know, we do talk about leadership. You can read through the leadership lens and we talk about that, like kind of what are the big things that we've pulled out from these books on that. But then it also, we have the fun, more fun conversations as well, where it's, you know, can you believe this character did that? And, you know, and some, and people do sometimes tie it back to kind of concrete stuff they're dealing with at work um, or a specific leadership challenge they're facing. But a lot of times it's more watching the gears turn in their head, <laughs> you know, while we're having this other conversation. So. Well, you know, you talked about introvert and uh, extrovert a minute ago, and certainly um, the more extroverted we are, the more we process verbally, right? And so yeah. just having the chance, whether whether we're thinking it out loud or having more time yet to think about it introspectively, even if we're in a group, is a useful sort of thing. So you mentioned it earlier, and people are wondering. And so um, how do you pick your novels? And so I'm going to ask this in two parts, like how do you pick them for your group? But what advice sure. might you have if people want to, we certainly are, are hoping people are going to say, hey, this is a virtual group. I can join Melanie yes. and her group, uh, leaderswhofiction.com. You can learn a lot more there. But even if I want to do this for myself, uh, well, let's take that in two parts. First, how do you pick your novels for the group? So it's a combination. At the start, I was picking the books just by myself of going either I've, I've read this and I want to reread it. And I think that the, it has enough meat to have a conversation. Like, I think this would be a good talking around point. Um, there were one or two where I had done my research on them and I was like, well, I haven't read it, but let's, let's experiment and see how that goes. Um, the interesting thing for me is when I did that, I actually was the one who didn't like the book, but everybody else did. <laughs> Um, which was great. I mean, you know, it's fun to not have everyone having the same opinions on this stuff. Um, I do try, and then we, we do people, um, our members have been wanting, I'm going to call them members for lack of a better word, but people have wanted to also make recommendations of stuff that they think would be good for the group. And so I try to incorporate those into the schedule as well. Um, I do try to be cognizant when we're picking the books. I don't want to pick anything that's too, too long. Um, we've picked two, we've had two books that were on the longer side. And for those we gave, we'd said, well, we'll meet two months from now. Um, because I really want to keep this in a, this is enjoyable. This is doable. This isn't some huge burden, um, you know, on me. And I think being aware of and being sensitive to people's time is important on that. And I do try to have a mix of genres and, um, you know, try to keep it balanced between male and female authors and, um, and topics and just try to keep it interesting. But I think one of the, the cool things when you get a group of people who are choosing books, and ultimately I have the, I have the power, I have the veto as the organizer on it, but um, you read stuff that you wouldn't have picked up otherwise too, which I think is, is always interesting um, to kind of get outside your comfort zone. And um, so, so that's how we pick the books for the group. Um, so I was going to ask you the next question, which I hinted at, which is how, how, what advice would you have for us? But let everybody just listen to what Melanie just said. That's what you do. Or just go to leaderswhofiction.com and you can see the books that they've done or are going to do. And you can just pick. Yes from her list as well. So um, as you have people thinking about joining you or if people ask you about this approach, um, what are the biggest questions that you get from people? M maybe biggest questions or maybe biggest, um, you know, sort of pushback. Sure. So I think um, one pushback that I've had from people is, well, people are so full, like our schedules are so full. Like, how are you expecting people to add another thing to their plate? And, you know, I always hate it when people are like, hey, just keep adding this stuff. Wake up an hour earlier. I'm like, okay, like that's just like only, we all need rest and we all need downtime and, and our families are important and whatever, you know, our health is important. And so at a certain point, like I'm not trying to, if you hate reading, I'm not trying to convert you into a reader. Um, you know, I think this is just a, 
if if this happens to speak to you, if you do like reading fiction, I just don't want those people to feel like they have to give that up. Um, and so if this isn't your thing, totally fine. Like go, go listen to podcasts, go do the training courses. I love podcasts. Like there's a, like, go do it all day. If that's, who, if that's what you want to do. Um, and it's, you know, maybe you've got young kids and that's not the right time. It's fine. Um, I do think that there are ways, like the ways that I've started to read more fiction is because at, I used to not read because my eyes were really tired at the end of the day. Working in especially digital marketing, I was like, I can't look at my, you know, my eyes just don't want to focus. But if I read for a week or two, my eyes got used to it. Um, my brain got used to it. I started looking forward to it. And so I think there's some just habit shift. One of the other questions that I've had or pushbacks from people um, is if they have to show up every month, like if it's like, this commit, you know, big commitment that they're making for a year or something. And it's not like that. Um, we have people who've come to a couple of meetings. We have people that come to every single meeting that we have. Um, so it's really up to each individual. And the other thing is like right now is be, especially because, you know, we're, we're building this and kind of seeing where it's going to go. There's not a cost to this. So you can Go check out a book from a library. You can listen it, listen to it on an audio book. I'm so not as, you know, some people are snobs about these things, e-readers or whatever, <laughs> you know, like however you read best and each, sometimes people even like mixing it up between books. So all of that's good. And so Melanie, before we start to round into the final stretch here, um, is there anything that I didn't ask that you wish I would have? Um, I'm trying to think. I think you've covered a lot. Um, no, I think um, I just want to invite people to to come join us. And the best way to find that is to go to our website. We've got the schedule and books and stuff there. And the schedule doesn't work for everybody. That's my other pushback because right now we're just we have one hour available in a month. But if we have more interest, then you know maybe we'll have more because I think it'd be important to keep the groups kind of small. Um, leaders do fiction.com. So other than reading Melanie, what do you yeah. do for fun? Uh, I mean, so we're going to take as a, reading as a given in this particular case. Yeah. Yeah. Reading is definitely a given. Um, so my other big loves, um, I like swimming and doing yoga. Those are kind of my other active hobby things. Um, I love to travel. Um, so try to travel several times a year. And although the last two years, that's been not as much fun, but I've still traveled a little bit. Um, and then drinking wine. That's my other, if you want to count that as a hobby, drinking wine would be my other. <laughs> and, and listen, depending on how much you can even drink wine while you're reading your book. There you go. So and while traveling, I mean, or you while can do traveling. all of them or at maybe the same probably time. Not while doing yoga or swimming, but the, uh, after yoga, yeah after swimming. Right. So, yeah. um, so, uh, you know, because I know that you did your homework and you told me before we started that you'd listen to several episodes and, uh, those who are listening for more than the first or second time know that I always ask this question. It's never been more appropriate than right now. And that is, um, what are you reading right now, Melanie? <laughs> uh, so right now I, uh, I just started a book called um the story of my teeth which is by a mexican author but i'm like six pages into it it's hilarious um so i'm excited to read the rest of it but i don't feel like i'm so far in that i even really have it. i try to not sometimes i pick books and i don't really look at what they're about until i'm in it and kind of just go along for the ride and that's one of these books um so that's one book um i the our group this month is reading the overstory by richard powers um i read it last year and um so i'm just kind of going through it that much faster right now but um the story of my teeth is the book that i just started i can promise all of you that no one on this show has suggested or said that they are reading the story of my teeth at least not <laughs> until right now um so melanie we've talked about it several times but where where do you want to point people uh, if they want to learn more about you, um, your business, this exciting venture, where do you want to point people? 
Sure. So um, two places. One would be my LinkedIn profile. Uh, so if you look up Melanie Bell, I should come up. Um, my day, like my my day job. It's almost weird when you're an entrepreneur to be like, I have my business and then a side hustle. It <laughs> it doesn't resonate as much. But so my full business strategic piece. So you can find us on LinkedIn, um, and the best place that's probably the best place to connect with me individually. And then um, check out our website, leaderswhofiction.com. I'll put it up there again, leaderswhofiction.com. And now I have a question for all of you who are listening, perhaps watching, but listening. And that is, now what? What are you going to do as a result of this? Now, um, usually when I get to this point in the show, I'll list several things that you might want to try or do. In this case, I'm going to say, what fiction book are you going to pick up and start reading and, and or listening to, right, to uh, to Melanie's point? So the, the, the question here is, what are you going to do with what you've learned? And in this particular case, that probably means doing some reading and maybe, maybe not what you've read before, or perhaps reading the fiction you already read with that leadership lens. So perhaps you get a new insight or idea that you can apply, whether you do that for yourself, whether you do that with others. Um, Melanie? Thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate how it. Was the, how was your first one? It was awesome. I hope I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> well, listen, everybody, um, if you liked this week's episode, you certainly want to make sure you go to leaderswhofiction.com. But if you like this one, you need to come back next week because we'll be here again doing this again. And if you like this, invite someone to join us. Point this out to someone. Like this podcast wherever you happen to like it rate it or whatever but let people know and come back and join us next week for another episode of the remarkable leadership podcast thanks everybody